today we're going to be doing a review on this bad boy. Everybody keeps asking me about this thing. I've been getting a lot of questions for a good while now on this thing, but here lately I've been getting quite a few, uh, especially after that video I did of the uh, us bailing with this thing. Um, I'm going to start out and I'm going to explain how it works. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to talk about how it does on my land and how it's been so far. Um, first thing is we need to start at the front and I'm going to work my way to the back. This is your hitch right here. It hooks into the back of the baler. The baler's over here. You'll have a hitch right here on your baler. If your baler ain't got one, you got to buy one to go on it. This, uh, every, this is a Massey Ferguson hitch. Which is what you'll have to get if you got a new Holland. You have to get a new Holland hitch, or if you've got a, a John Deere or whatever, same thing. Or you can make yourself one, I guess. Um, but it pans into it. Then you have your guide belts for when you're turning. That keeps these belts are for when you're turning. It keeps the hay from popping out here as you turn, so it lines it up to go in there. They have these belts that run out the side between the baler and the accumulator now let's go over here and i'm gonna show y'all how this how it hooks up when you get this baler you probably noticed it just a minute ago it comes with this adapter and this adapter fits all balers um to bolt on the back of your baler you can still bail with this thing on or you can uh take it off or whatever say you didn't want to use that thing for some reason or you had a job where they didn't want you to use it and you're doing some custom work you can still bail with it on there um it has these clip these pin pins right here this is what your belt hooks into with a little clip pin on this side and there's another one on this side and you hook it on this side and it goes around and hooks it to there and then as it goes up it keeps the bail from popping over here and hanging uh the way it works the way the belt system works is spring loaded is what tenches it when you get it hooked up this will be this thing here will be about right here when it's hooked up and this thing will have quite a bit of tension on it and that way when you turn the bail won't push out this way it'll stay inside kind of the track to go into here uh to get it to line up to go in here this plate is pointed upwards i don't know if y'all can see that or not but it's pointed upwards like this you could, there's an adjustment through these holes to set it where it's supposed to be. You put a straight edge right here and it, it's supposed to be at a certain angle. It tells you in the book if you buy one how to do all that uh, and how to set it up. But that's what keeps it pointed upwards to go up that slide. It just slightly bends it and then it goes straight up. But these are your guide belts here. Um, then once it goes up, it's got a hay dog. This is so that way when you quit bailing, they won't come back down. Say it's kicking them pretty hard and it gets up past there and you undo the baler it'll they'll hold the hay in there if you want it to and keep it from falling back down it goes up over the top it comes back down okay your hay comes down it comes down this slot it goes straight down it's going to hit this bar right here on the end corner now that bar is going to hit catch that end corner and it's going to push it out that way and then it'll allow it to slide in there right over that and that pushes back it'll be on the back side of the bale that's what turns that bale sideways for the 10 bale pattern to catch it then you have two more bales make it up here before that fall that comes down through here and the second bale that comes down that's straight this way catches this and it opens to that gate then it's gonna flow down it's gonna flow down and it'll go right down in there the same way two bales and this catches when this catches it pulls that trip gate up there over then your hay flows down that side and it's the same process over again okay now you're probably wondering what trips it to make it go i had somebody ask me is it electronic what does it okay when you first uh, when this side gets full it's going to do the same thing it's going to pull the spring over when it gets its second bale in and it'll open that gate and the hay will flow right down through here all right as your second bail, first bell comes down through here that's going to hit the sideways bell it trips this lever my foot's in the way 
it hits this lever, see, and it pulls it that bar over into the trip. Once your trip hits, the next bale to come down is going to hit this let piece of steel. Let me reposition myself. <laughs> Once it, uh, the trip lever is pushed over by the first bale that comes down, it's being held just like it is now. The second bale is going to come down through here is going to hit this. It pulls that, this, uh, it pulls this rod that way. All right, give me a minute to get in. Now, this rod is going to pull up this way. It twists this bar right here. All right, it comes out here got an elbow it goes this way and it pulls straight down which pulls this and then your tailgate's loose and it'll come up like that and then it's spring loaded and rehooks itself once it dumps you start all over again the only electronics on this coons accumulator is the tail lights that's it everything else is mechanically done uh, this thing's built by the Amish everything on it's mechanical except for the lights um right here is your trip springs and cables and stuff it's all done by cables and springs uh this is that lever that splits that changes the sides that it's putting hay in when it pulls down see it just pulls they all work like this um this here's the trip lever see it's got a little tab when that lever down there is hit this will pop over and that's what hangs that to pull it downward to re uh, pull it up or to release it um another thing is is when you're bailing you can watch to make sure your bales are turning through these holes uh you can look at your hay and see where it's at and know if the bales turn right or not when it's dropping 10 for your sideways tie bales and this is just for the 10 bale model not the 8 or the 12 or well they got a ton of different patterns um but you can see if the hay's backed up or whatnot whenever it throws that bale down there now it's very simple but it's also a little bit of a pain to get these set up but once you get them set up they're set and they're and they're good until something breaks or wears out or something like that it took me probably 3,000 bales to get this thing set up perfect to where when I go to the field, it's click, 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 okay? Um, Kane had just went to sell these. I think I was the first or second person to buy one of these uh, from him. And we kind of learned how one of these things worked together and exactly all the ins and outs of them and the little tweaks here and there things you can do to make it work it took me a little while to figure it all out and everything um but once i got it set up it's worked good uh if you'd asked me the first week we got this thing uh i'll be honest daddy and me was about to send it back um because every time it would dump it was missing a bale back here nearly every time it dumped nine or eight or every now and then you got lucky it dumped ten like it was supposed to uh and what it was is this thing wasn't adjusted out of the factory the way it needed to be you got to set them up in the field um these side panels was pushed too far in and there wasn't enough room down in here for this to twist and it would work and then it wouldn't work Another thing that I was having issues with was these bars wouldn't catch in the ends just right and I had to get them the height on them set just right. They've got little set screws here and you can knock that pin up and down to get it just right. Uh, but that was where my issues was. As far as the slats working, going up and down and everything, I, none of that's giving me trouble. It was getting the bale to turn. Um, but once I figured out that this needed to be widened out and this needed to be dropped a little bit on each side, then I, re I figured out that uh, it went to working right. Um, now, one issue I had with this accumulator that I did not like, that I corrected on my own um, and did not contact the dealer or anything, is this little trip bar, it has a clamp, almost like a water hose clamp that's metal right there. It squeezes on this pipe. 
This thing kept moving about every 250, 300 bales, and it would not allow that trip lever to work up there right to dump it. So what I did is I took my drill and drilled straight through this collar and straight through that pipe, and I put a bolt through it so that way that darn thing can't move no more. Uh, the ironic thing was is there's a keyway slot in this thing, so that way, for evidently, if it needed a keyway, it should have had one, or they should have made it a keyway to go in it to clamp down on it, but they didn't. So I had to drill a hole through it and I put the bolt in it. That has been fixed and I given any trouble. That was the one thing that was not adjustable that was an issue was that. I got that fixed and I got the adjustments fixed on the back for the turning. And ever since then, it's done good. It's made in the USA. These things are, are built. Uh, well, there you go. Coons, North Bloomfield, Ohio. Um, but it's made in America. I like it. it it's done. It's, since I got it set up good, it's been doing a good job. But it took me a while to get it all set up and working right. Um, one change they made to these is they made this an open trough instead of a caged uh, fully enclosed things and make it easier to get your bales out. I do like that change they made to it. Another thing they did, I don't know why they did it, but they did it. Uh, the tailgate now goes up and then comes back down to close rather than folding down like a tailgate on a truck and then popping back up. I don't know why they changed that, but they did. It works great. I haven't had any issues with the tailgate. Um, but Everybody's probably wondering how to do on your land on the hills. That's another question I've got. When we initially, I initially seen these things, I thought there's no way that's going to work for me. Uh, my ground's too hilly, too rough. And then I seen DLH on his channel going across the same kind of ground I'm going across. And I was like, that thing's working. And it had the height I needed to go over rougher ground with dips and terraces and everything where the stepping system goes right across the ground or your drag along the ground systems uh that tail behind the baler and everything the holsters were too expensive and too narrow i didn't really like that about them um and i know a lot of people that's had those and they all have them for a little while and then they get rid of them for some reason um that and that holster did not come in a 10 bell pattern i like the 10 bell pattern because you can tie every single layer you just turn the, the the layer around the opposite direction every single time. It's real easy to do it, and it's tied all the way through. It's not every every few layers it's tied. Um, and they stack better like that. But with the ground and going over terraces and stuff, it does, it does good. Uh, real steep, sharp terraces, though, you need to go to the end and come back down, just like you would with a rake or something you don't go over the terraces if you do these front carrier wheels will pick up on the on the uh back of the baler um and we learned then that it didn't really work one thing i would like to see them do is put a flexible mouth on this thing with a bolt through here and it'll flex up and down that would help it a lot with traveling over the ground um but it does good on hilly ground. I've not put it on no steep hillside. I have not done that. Uh, and what I mean by steep, if y'all live in the mountains like I do, you know what is steep is like what most people would never even consider going across. <laughs> but us up here in the mountains, we kind of we had, don't have much of a choice sometimes <laughs> with the more farmland than we've got available to us, and we have to run on ground that most people would never even consider going across. Uh, I had not run it on none of that, but I have run it on fairly pretty steep hilly ground, uh, but not like steep, steep. Um, and it's done, it's done good. Uh, if you was going to run it on steep, steep ground, I would probably, I mean, as long as you're going straight up and down, I don't really see an issue with it. Um, the only thing that you could have a problem with is when you're going down, it would level this thing out and it may not allow the bales to travel down. But when I've been going downhill, or Daddy has, uh, he hasn't had any issues with that so far. Uh, it's traveled really well going down it, and it's worked good. 
I mean, y'all have seen the land that I'm on. It's not flat land at all. Uh, it's, it's at best, gentle rolling ground um, when we're, wherever we're at. And then it's hills most of the time. Uh, but it does good on it. It doesn't get top heavy. That was the, what I was so afraid of was it getting top heavy. Uh, why I didn't want one for so long, but it's really wide. Uh, it's got a nice wide axle to balance the weight out to carry it over ground like that. And really, it looks like you're, you're, it'd be real top heavy. There's not a whole lot up there. Uh, most of your weight is from here down. And the reason why is one, the arch they've got it on, and two, all your hay is from here down. All this area up here is just for the guidance of the bales coming down for the trip doors and everything. There's no hay up here. Everything's down in here low. Uh, it does very good on hillier ground. Um, I mean, you wouldn't want to go out there and put it on something that's just, I mean, where the bales roll down the hill when they're coming out of the back of the square baler. We've got some ground like that, and I don't even square bail that, I just roll it. Uh, you don't want to probably run it across something like that unless it's for a real short distance just to get it up. Uh, but it does, it does very well with it. Um, I've, been, I've been very pleased with this uh, accumulator since I got it set up. We'll see what happens in the future. But it does very good behind this inline. It trails right behind it. We don't undo this thing. That's another thing. Going down the road, traveling, pull it right behind the tractor and baler. You don't have to worry about walking the thing over or none of that crap or that thing being off the side of you like a New Holland or John Deere is. It trails right behind it. Um, and it does. It, and one of the things that kind of shocked me about. I know this is going to be long, but it's information I kind of want to get out there about this thing so people have a better understanding uh, a lot of the questions that was not answered out there that i was looking to get answered when we bought this thing it actually follows the baler very well um you basically just pull the baler like you normally would and it follows right behind you the way they've got the front steering set up here on the front end with that pivot wheel that spins around and around it it, it just really it follows you there's no swinging out real wide and trying to get it real out because it's so long it just trails right behind you it'll follow right in the path just straight behind you and it turns and everything uh we've got little five acre fields that are tight turning that we square bell in with this thing and it does good with them uh it really does uh so i mean you'll skip a row like uh, i do when i'm around by then i won't go into the very next row next to me i go into the one that's over one uh, but I do that anyway where I'm round rolling square bailing before we even had this thing. Uh, but uh, it does do good going down the road, trailing you, everything. Um, I have not pulled this thing behind a pickup truck yet to move it somewhere uh, or whatnot. But you can load this thing. Um, one thing you can do is pick this pickup up head up there's another hole here you can slide a pin through it and hook it into your three point just pick the front wheels up and back it up on a trailer uh, or pull it on a trailer that way and then you don't have to worry about it moving with you with the back wheels uh, behind the tractor and then you pull your baler with a pickup um, to get it there uh, it, or you can pull I think it looks like you could pull it uh, somebody else may know more about it than I have. I haven't done it yet. But it looks like you pull it all right with a pickup truck behind you. Um, but I hadn't done that yet. But so far, it's it's worked out good. And I like it. Um, it's really surprised me. I thought it was going to be a little more problematic than it is. Um, but once I got everything set up the way it needed to be, um, it's all worked good. If you want one, give my buddy Kane a call. He's got them. He's got real good deals on these things. Um, he's not paying me to say that. That's just the honest truth. A lot of y'all have dealt with him and know. Um, but I like it so far. We'll see how it goes in the future. This is the same as the 1036F. It is now an AF10. This is a new model. The uh, number that they've come up with is an AF10 on these. It was the 1036F. Um, but so far, I've been real pleased with it. 
uh, the plug in it just goes down the hitch down here if he's wondering about that and then they send you a wiring harness with the ba with the uh, thing and I bolted the plug back here wrapped the wire all the way around it went back to the front and then go from the front up um, but all that came with the baler or I mean not with the baler with the accumulator but so far I like it uh, daddy is running it he told me the other day that it was the most fun he's had uh bailing it everything just went good and he didn't have no issues he didn't have to stop uh with it um and we've got everything ironed out now uh but it did take me without any dealer help or nothing it took me about probably three thousand bales to get it to run it perfect knowing something about it or after watching this video seeing that about these sides or something you can probably get it adjusted within a few hundred bales or something now that you know what kind of what they do i didn't know any of that um about the back but thanks for watching please comment rate subscribe i hope y'all enjoyed this video um uh, if you have any questions anymore on it uh shoot me a comment and i'll try to answer them the best you can in case i forgot something but uh, i'll see y'all next time